Hi, welcome to the tutorial on conditional statements. By the end of this topic, you will be able to explain and implement conditional statements. So far, we have understood the building blocks of Python language and also looked at the basic data science libraries such as NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. We will now build simple Python constructs such as conditional and iterative statements and functions. In this tutorial, we will talk about conditional statements. The iterative statements and functions will be covered in the subsequent tutorials. So let's discuss conditional statements. We often take a lot of decisions every day. For example, when you return home from college, there are two possibilities. Either you return home early or you return home late. Now, if you return early, you can cook a delicious snack for yourself and do your assignments too. But if you are late, you know that you will not be able to complete your assignments if you engage yourself in cooking. Now, as a result, it will be better for you to order your snack. We will often face situations where we will have to make decisions based on certain conditions. To help us handle these problems, Python has the concept of conditional statements. Let us now have a look at the syntax of conditional statements in Python. If condition colon do something, else colon do something else. Now let's break down the syntax step by step. In the first statement, Python checks whether the condition is true or false. If the condition is true, Python enters the body of the if construct and executes the do something, which represents the set of statements. Note that the else condition in this case is not executed. Now, if the condition is false, Python does not execute the do something part, also known as true statement, whereas it will enter the body of the else statement, also known as false statement, and will execute do something else. Let's check what happens when we try to model our previous example of cooking with the help of Python using conditional statements. First, we will define the condition and the resultant decision using the syntax we discussed. This looks very similar to what we discussed above in the syntax. Note that i equals to late is a condition we are checking and the pair of equal signs is the equivalence operator which checks whether the two things on either side are exactly the same or not. Now, if we try to run this code, you will find out that it gives an error. Can you guess why? It is because the i is not defined yet. So, let's define i as late and see what happens when we run the code. We see that order snack statement was executed. This is clearly what we expected as the condition i equals to late is true. And therefore, the true condition statement was executed. Note that the else condition was not executed. Now, let's try the other way around. Let's define i to be early. What do you think will happen in this case? Exactly what we discussed during the syntax discussion when the condition equal to i was checked, the result was false. As a result, the Python control never entered the if block and skipped to the else section and executed the cook statement. Now that we have understood the basic if else statement, let's look at some more examples. For that, let's consider a different problem statement. We are given any number between 0 and 100. And based on the number, we have to print good or OK or needs improvement. If the number is 80 or greater, print good. If the number is greater or equal to 60 and less than 80, print OK. Else, print needs improvement. According to the problem statement, the condition would be something like as shown on the screen. So let's try to model this using Python. First, we will model the conditions the way we have learned so far. So let's now try to pass a value of k as 90 and see what comes as an output. 
Well, we clearly did not expect this result. Can you guess why this is happening? It is because both the conditions k is greater than equal to 80 and k is greater than equal to 60 came out to be true and therefore condition body corresponding to both of them resulted as true. What this essentially has done to change our original problem statement from this image to this image which is not what we wanted. So how do we handle it? We can do this by using the elif conditional statement. Let's look at the syntax of the elif conditional statement. If condition 1 colon do true statement 1. Elif condition 2 colon do true statement 2 else colon do false statement. In this case, the python control will first check for condition 1. If the condition is true, the true statement 1 is executed and the python control comes out of the if conditional block. If the condition 1 is false, python control will check condition 2 and if it is true, then python control will execute true statement 2. If condition 2 is also false, the else part is executed. Let's see how it works in Python. This works perfectly. Although both the conditions satisfy the value of k given, only the first one is executed as we mentioned the second condition as else of the first condition. Now let's look at another example to understand one more variant of conditional statements and for that we will consider another problem statement. You are given a number. You have to find out whether the number is greater than 50 or less than 50. Also, if the number is greater than 50, check whether it is even or not. If the number is less than 50, check whether it is odd or not. We will start by defining the basic conditions where the number is greater than 50 or less than 50. We have already seen this structure before. But now, we also have to check whether the number is even if the number is greater than 50 or odd if the number is less than 50. So let's do that in Python. We will start by extending the condition 1 which is num is greater than 50. We will define another condition which will check if the number is even or not. We do this by checking whether the number is divisible by 2 or not. If the number is divisible by 2, the statement number is even and greater than 50 is printed. If the number is not divisible by 2, we will define the else block of divisibility condition. As a result, number is not even and greater than 50 is printed. Now, we will extend the main else condition corresponding to the num not greater than 50. We will again define the similar if else condition for the odd number as we did earlier. If the number is not divisible by 2, the statement number is odd and is less than 50 is printed. If the number is divisible by 2, we will define the else block of divisibility condition. As a result, number is not odd and less than 50 is printed. So let's try this function with the value of num as 67 and run this cell. Alright, the conditional structure that we just made works. Let's try this for more values. That is 90, 47, 42. We see that all the values work fine as we expect them to. This concept of condition inside a condition is known as nested conditional statements. Now before we wrap up on the conditional statements, you have a little task to do. You have to guess what the output will be when we set num as 50. So 
वी हैव नाउ अंडरस्टूड ऑल द फंडामेंटल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द कंडीशनल स्टेटमेंट्स यू शुड फील फ्री टू ट्राई आउट द डिफरेंट कंडीशन एंड हाउ टू सॉल्व दैम ऑन योर ओन इन द नेक्स्ट ट्यूटोरियल वी विल डिस्कस द आइट्रेटिव स्टेटमेंट्स सी यू देन